Now it would help if I clamp this wood down a little bit. When you're putting the T-molding in, uh, I found a wooden mallet works real well. I just uh, clamp down the top of the panel you're working on. And then uh, once you have your, your grooves routed with, the, with this uh, 1 16th slot bit, you can take your T-molding and uh, in your corners cut little V-grooves out. And then as you uh, as you go around, you just uh, tap it in like that, and it you don't want to hit real hard. It'll leave a nasty mark on the outside of the T mold. But uh, you see how this is kind of swelling out a little bit right there, and it's flat at the corner, and then swells out. That's just because I haven't pushed it in. See so, yeah, how it's uh, flattening out there. When we're done, uh, you can go back in these little spots where you see a raised up spot and like that. You can just give a little tap with a wooden mallet. Something that's not going to leave an, a mark on your T-mold, you know. And it just lays in there. And I mean, once you, once you hammer this stuff in there, once you get it in there real well, it, it's not coming out. I've, I've read where some people have taken glue and uh, and glued in the T molding. I don't know. I, on my first cabinet, uh, I, I've never had a problem with the T molding coming out. And if you glue it, then uh, you know for some reason later you wanted to change the look of your cabinet a little bit and uh, put a different color T molding in. Well, then you'd be out of luck, or you'd have a mess on your hands. But anyway, this is just a demo of how I do my T molding and. Um, and it works out pretty well. You see, um, this is a three-quarter inch sheet of BC grade uh, plywood, and uh, which is what my what my panel top is made of, right there. And I'm about to go around it with the uh, with the slider. And what I was doing here, I was test testing out the slot cutter to make sure that I was in the exact middle of all these layers uh, here and on some pieces of plywood you can count the layers some of them have s seven layers or five layers and if it, you know if it has seven layers you just pick the third one in the middle and, or the fourth one in the middle actually and if it's five you, you uh, come down two and pick the third or the, now if it's five you would split the one in the middle but um, anyway just find the middle part, part and uh, cut your slot. What I had to do was since the layers on this piece of plywood aren't uh, readily apparent it's kind of kind of hard to tell where some of the layers are. What I did was I just held the router I'll grab the router here. I held the router in place and uh, just moved it until it looked like it was in the middle and then I cut a short strip on a on this scrap piece of plywood, and uh, did this test fit of this T mold here to uh, to get the bit depth uh, exactly right on my router. Uh, it's not an exact thing. Every piece of wood is going to be a little different on this router. It wound up being I don't know if you can see that, but it's between 532nd and uh, 964th which is kind of an odd measurement there but uh, that's what worked for me so anyway that's just a little quick and dirty on how I fit T-molding so I'm about to uh, about to route out this uh, panel top here and uh, get it ready for final sanding oh let me let me show you this I, I got my template cut out of uh, plexiglass last night completely cut and uh, 
thankfully I don't have any cracks or uh, really ugly marks or anything on it you can see that it, it it fits down pretty well fits into place I'll just move all these edges really what I'm gonna do is just line it up by the holes like that and you can see there's my uh, plexiglass overlay for my control panel top and uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll print a graphic or uh, or maybe even paint this portion black and put some graphics or decals or something underneath here and this plexiglass, plexiglass will lay down over the top and protect that graphic and uh, keep my little boys sticky fingers from uh, messing the wood up so and these edges that are a little bit inexact right here I'm gonna go around that once I uh, once I complete this and have it fitted right I'll drill a hole here 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 and probably here to secure this panel down. I may actually do uh, a little bolt here and here. I'm gonna run to Home Depot and try to find a, kind of a decorative smooth top bolt to go, go through with, uh, with a small rubber grommet to hold this plexiglass down so that it doesn't crack when I, uh, doesn't crack when I hold it down. Uh, I, I read on the build your own arcade controls forum about people having issues problems cutting plexiglass and how Lexan was a much better material to use well Lexan is uh, about three times as expensive as plexiglass so I, I went with the cheap uh, 1 8 inch plexi this this sheet here was a uh, I think an 18 by 24 sheet and uh, I think it was $11. So once I get this all test fitted perfectly, I'm gonna take this piece off, lay it down on a scrap piece of plywood and completely trace it out, start to finish the outside edges, every hole and every screw hole and, and make myself another template so that if something happens to this piece, I'll, I'll be able to cut out another one fairly easily. Um, the, the way that I cut my holes in the plexiglass was um, with a uh, with a jigsaw blade. Uh, that's what I cut my uh, my straight edges. I use the uh, this uh, this blade right here. It's a wood slash fine cut blade. Uh, there's a number on the blade. It's a skill blade number ninety four three ten. That's what I use to cut all the edges. But to cut the holes in this plexiglass without getting cracks what I did was I laid this control panel down or the overlay down piece of plexiglass on a scrap piece of plywood and I used an inch and an eighth spade bit in a drill and uh, very carefully and making sure that the plexiglass was completely secured down I actually stood on it I put my feet uh, on either side of the hole that I was drilling and stood on the plexiglass which was on top of the plywood to make sure that it didn't move or vibrate very much and I would drill these holes and as I would drill the holes down uh, I would start uh, kind of slowly get the guide hole in the middle spot and drill down and eventually the spade bit would pop a small circle out of the hole as it melted uh, halfway through the plastic and uh, I drilled you know 20 something holes here and not a single crack uh, anywhere uh, these little marks here are just uh, pieces of the plastic coming up uh, I, I initially thought about using this uh, bimetal uh, this is a Ryobi bimetal hole saw I've heard of people using this and running it running it running the uh, running this bit in reverse to just burn your way through the, the plexiglass but uh, I forgot to buy the arbor uh, that goes in the hole here so I didn't have that so um, 
as a, as a workaround, I, I tested this spade bit on a, on a corner of this plexiglass to see if it would work, and it, and it worked great. And, I, and so I was real happy to find that method and not, not uh, ruin this plexiglass sheet. Well, I think that's about it for now. I think, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to finish putting this control panel together. Uh, routing it and sanding it out and uh, I'll uh, try to do another movie and some pictures when I'm done with that.